Hey, I'm Neil from ESPN The Magazine. I'm here with Anna and Wendy, the founders of the USPDF, the United States Pole Dancing Federation. And they're going to tell us a little bit about pole dancing as a sport in the upcoming National Pole Dancing Championships. We have women coming from all over the United States. We have, uh, we have um, four women from New York, and we have uh, a couple competitors from California, from uh, Nevada, uh, Florida, um, Maryland. Once we put the word out, it just kind of spread like crazy. So um, we basically just put the word out with all the connections that we've had. I've had a studio for four years, so I've made a lot of uh, connections around the United States. Put the word out, and we have women submit videos, and then my partner and I uh, work through that to try to find the ones that we thought were ready to compete in the competition. The breakdown of the competition, what we're doing is we're going to have a compulsory routine. We're going to have an optional routine, which is similar to how gymnastics uh, structures their competitions. What types of moves will we see? In One is an inner thigh. Hold. It does not have to be this exact move, but the majority of the weight has to be on the inner thighs. And if you've ever pole danced before, you know what I'm talking about because there's a severe burn that's very painful to hold the pole between your inner thighs. <laughs> I'll have to take your word. <laughs> uh, and then what are we judging as we look at this right here? Um, that the foot is not too flexed, that you have nice straight legs, very nice lines, a nice arch in the back, and control going in and out of the move. And we also judge on the transitions that you choose to get yourself in and out of the moves as well. Also, um, an inversion, basically with the hips directly above the head. So she's got her hips above her head. And we all the poses need to be held for three seconds to show again control. Here's another inversion, okay. another variation of an inversion. And what are we what's important about this? Um, with this again, a nice curve in the back, open hip flexors here, so she's not too tight. Sure. And flexors. just showing control and um, and being nice and solid in the movement again, being able to hold it for three seconds, which is very difficult because you start doing physical activity, you start sweating gets a little slippery, so it does become a big challenge to hold these things. Now this is all relying on friction up in her calf. And Absolutely, that's why the um, pole dancers need to have um, on small shorts and small shirt, so that their skin is exposed and allows them to use their skin to stick to the pole um, so that they don't fall to the ground quickly. Now she's, <laughs> she's actually, believe it or not, She's over, stuck there. Over, overdressed, overdressed right now, right? A little bit. Often the midsection is a, is open to allow um, sticking with your with your obliques onto the pole, but she's holding on just fine even without that. So it's not certainly not necessary, but a lot of women choose to do that. Anna's going to show you a Supergirl, which basically it's self-explanatory. Looks like she's Superwoman flying through the air. I mean, it's a total body workout without a doubt, and I often um, describe doing a one-minute pole dancing routine as running sprints. Um. Thank you to Anna and Wendy. Um, and if you want to see some real pole dancing, um, if you want to see some real pole dancing, uh, the national championships are in, are in New York next Sunday at 2 to 15, or you can go to uspoledance.com.